everybody, welcome back to another episode of Title Tuesdays. My name's Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO, also known as Your Title King. Don't forget to subscribe below to get access to all of our wonderful trainings that we're teaching here. We issue videos every single week that hopefully help take your business to the next level. Today's topic is important because it's going to protect your money. We're talking about cyber fraud and identity theft. We see people trying to get access to many of our clients' accounts on a daily basis. We get emails where people are trying to get access to seller proceeds and things on a daily basis. So we've learned and we put a lot of tips in place in order to make sure that we're protecting the consumer's money. First and foremost, how does this happen? There are a lot of bad guys out there. These bad guys just want to gain financial access to a real estate transaction. So now they can try and divert some of that money to go to them as opposed to the person it's uh, intended to go to. One of the things that we see in the FTC as well as the National Association of Realtors put out a bulletin several years ago that realtors are getting hacked. Realtors are getting hacked left and right because there's someone looking to gain a financial access to that transaction. They take some of the information in the email and now they're going to ask you to send some type of financial information to a third party. They're going to maybe ask you to wire a deposit to a title company that's not really the title company. Or they're going to ask you to wire a deposit somewhere and it's not really where it's supposed to be. So hopefully some of the tips in this video are going to teach you what you can look out for in your next real estate transaction to keep this from happening to you. So do not email financial information. If you have to email financial information, always follow up with a phone call. There are many times that our wiring instructions get emailed to a buyer or a seller stop what you're doing, pick up the phone, call the title company and say, hey, title company, I would just like to verify the wiring instructions. But here's a tip. Don't call the phone number in the email. Do your own research, look up the title company and call the number that you've found. Because a lot of times that email, if it was hacked, they're going to change the number. And then when you call, you're going to think you're talking to the title company and you may not be. So always do your own research and figure out who you can talk to. One of the things that we're going to talk about are domain replies. When you're looking at an email address and you see there's a domain name, look at the domain name. Click on the links, hover over it, and sometimes you can see that it could say a website, and then when you click on the link, it says something totally different. This, this is how these email scammers get access, because then you click on the link, and now they install some type of software, some ransomware, some malware on your computer, and now they take over your entire computer and now they have access to be able to go to other people involved in these transactions and try and get you to, to send money somewhere where it doesn't belong. So be very, very, very careful. Scrutinize the links that you have in an email. If you have an email address and there's links or there's attachments, you need to be very, very careful what you're clicking on to make sure that you don't click on anything that's bad. Spot shady behavior from the beginning. So what are some of the things that you can look out for with some of these fraudsters? Well, the first thing is requests at odd hours. If you're getting requests from a title company or from a realtor to send money somewhere and it's at weird hours of the day, you know there may be something fishy with that. So always verify when anytime you're asked to send a wire, send a deposit, mail a check, or do anything that would have a financial impact on you, Always call and verify and follow up to make sure it's legitimate. Second thing are payments to an unusual person. You never want to send payments to a person that you do not know is involved in the transaction. If you get information to send a wire to the title company, call the title company, verify their information before you release your wire because otherwise it could be gone forever. International wires is another big one. If you're asked to send money overseas, be very, very careful. We always do double work when it comes to sellers wanting their money sent to an overseas account to see is this legitimate, is this right, are they from that country, to make sure that we're not being asked to do something that could potentially cause one of our consumers to lose any money. And then last minute changes is an important one. If you're asked last minute to wire deposit, wire proceeds, or something changes in the transaction, Stop what you're doing, pick up the phone and verify because that's when a lot of these issues happen. A lot of title companies get phone calls from sellers saying, hey, I changed my bank account, something happened, I changed it, I need you to send the money here. You have to be very careful. We would always call and then verify on the phone, did you actually email us this change and was this legitimate? But if you're asked to wire money, if you got an email from your realtor last minute in the transaction saying, hey, wire the money to the title company for closing, be careful call and do a little bit of extra homework now because if you prepare properly now you're going to save problems later. 
and then any type of implementing additional controls of the talking about you know verifying via email text message with the realtor some form outside of the email is very very important so you almost have a double verification process it's important because when you see these links it could be a Dropbox link it could be attachments a lot of times you click on an attachment or you click on a link and it could be suspicious behavior that could install some type of malware or spyware on your computer so you need to just be very very careful so what can we do instead of clicking on a link in the email hover over it see the URL make sure it looks legitimate and then retype the URL in your web browser that's the safest way to go from the email to the website instead of just clicking the link hover over it see it and then put it into the web browser and then go to the website that you're supposed to be accessing be careful of opening attachments we talked about even if it looks like a PDF or something there could be documents and, and images contained in there that could cause some type of virus on your computer so just know what you're clicking on know that documents were sent to you know that it was a real estate contract or closing documents and you've been waiting for them then when they come in you know it's now safe in order to open them and conduct your real estate business keep your operating system up to date keep your web browsers up to date all of your security features on your computer make sure they're up to date make sure your malware and your and your um, antivirus software is always up to date your web browser security make sure the updates are always constantly done as annoying as the updates are you want to make sure they get done constantly to make sure all of these security breaches are now well protected on your operating system now what can you also do do not use for business AOL Gmail Yahoo those are very very bad for business you want to make sure you're using the business platform if you want to use Gmail use their business platform because they have a lot of security measures talking about encrypted email double opt-in authorization in order to make sure that your business transactions are protected sometimes some of the title companies are using secured emails and I know they're annoying sometimes to log in constantly have to put an email and a password to make sure you're getting access to them but remember it's for the safety and protection of the consumers to make sure that money is not stolen last but not least if you're a victim of any type of identity theft the first thing you need to do is stop call your bank and let them know that you think you've been a victim of some type of financial fraud or identity theft call number two is going to be to the FBI don't call the local police they're not going to do anything for you you need to call the FBI you can get their uh, wire fraud hotline you can give them a call and hopefully between your bank and the FBI they can get on it really quick to recover that money we've seen some companies that have been a victim and they were able to recover most of the money back if not all of it so it's very very important so that's a wrap here at title Tuesdays I thank you for watching don't forget forget to subscribe below and I look forward to seeing you at the closing table.